Welcome to the Get Real Podcast, your high octane boost of full on reality therapy for personal, business, and investing success with your host, Ron Phillips, because somebody's got to tell it like it is. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Get Real Podcast. Ron Phillips here with Heather Marchant off the road. We're both at home. Mm-hmm. Um, this, so this nice. Is, and man, we, we, <laughs> We've been wanting to do the show we're going to do today for quite a while. Um, yeah, like months. Yes. Six months, probably. And, um, you know, in, in my general fashion, um, I simply just didn't reach out to uh, Mike to have him on the show, in spite of the fact that we've been talking about it and wanting to have him on the show for, for literally months. So well, I was going to say, I don't have a moat around me. So I, <laughs> I mean, it, it literally took one email, everybody. So, um, uh, so my really Lessons. good friend, Mike McCloskey is on with us. Um, and I, what we're going to talk about today is everyone on here is going to, um, is going to really be interested in it, mm-hmm. specifically business owners, people who are managing other people, leading other people, in any way interacting with another human being, uh, everyone should pay attention um, to what we're going to talk about today. It's, it's, it's mind altering. Um, and before I introduce it, I just want to say I was sitting in a mastermind when I, when I met Mike. And we, we, so we got this thing. We got this survey to take. And the subject was kind of introduced a little bit. I get this survey. And... Um, and I'm, I'm game for taking surveys. I think this is f- fantastic, right? So this is, um, <laughs> I, I thought this was some kind of a, um, you know, who is Ron uh, like kind of personality a thing. test, personality I test, think. something yeah. like that was going to tell me something special about myself. So I, I get back and, and literally I look at this word soup and I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to pick, you know, some words that identify me or whatever. So I'm, I'm literally picking words and I get done with this in like six minutes Mm -hmm. and the next day we go back and, and Mike is supposed to tell us all about ourselves from the, however many words I chose in six minutes. And I was sitting there and I think Mike, I I think you remember this distinctly, Mike, because I was one of the guys sitting there looking obviously incredulous about this whole thing. I mean, I I have a hard time hiding what I'm feeling on my face. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and Mike goes, Ron, do you mind if I use you as a, as an example? I'm like, no, oh, I didn't man. know this. Oh, this oh is yeah. Good. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I figured if I could get the pessimist in the room to, uh, you know, get, I'm a realist. Know. Come on. I'm a realist. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. yeah. So Mike continues to completely nail ev- almost every aspect of who I am. And then I was like, oh, okay, so tell me more about this word soup that I just did, because there is no way you should know that much about a human being from me choosing words in six minutes. Um, and so with that, tell us what this predictive index word soup thing is and why it works and why it's so important to everybody, because Heather and I use this all the time wow. now in every aspect of the business, and it is amazing. Sure, yes. sure. Well, thanks again for inviting me on. First of all, this is great. We have talked about this a couple of times, um, uh, but it's been over a year and it was kind of we're just in passing. It was never really official. So I'm so glad to be part of, uh, of your show. So um, you know, the, the, I've never heard it used as a uh, phrase as word soup before. I love that. It's, uh, first of all, I mean, I but, think it's apropos, don't you? I mean, I- <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. It's uh, it's pr- the predictive index survey. Uh, and really, it's just an incredible tool. Um, it, it, I was actually introduced it, uh, to it quite a while ago. Um, but uh, it's such a simple thing. You know, a lot of times when people say, hey, let's do, you know, this survey or that survey, you know, some of them take, you know, 25 minutes to an hour and a half uh, for some of them. And they don't give you any more data in most cases than what I can get. And so it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty astonishing for sure. Yeah. So walk us through, because um, I'm, b- because I am a realist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because I am real. <laughs> well, I I want to know how you first heard about it. Yeah. Where, like, 
Yeah, it's actually a very interesting story. So um, I was the director of learning and development uh, for Mm -hmm. a pretty large global company. And I covered from basically Chicago to Hawaii. So Mm -hmm. any leadership competency trainings that that we were implementing, that was my territory. So I was responsible for that, that area. And it was fascinating because I spent a lot of time with people trying to coach and develop them and and, you know, you kind of had to see people work with people to understand, you know, really what drove them. Right. Yeah. And uh, what the, what kind of drives they had. And uh, after I was leaving that, it was just a ton of travel. I didn't want to travel so much anymore. So I applied with another company. Um, this is obviously way pr- prior to starting Humanlytics. Um, and so I applied with another company and they ran a predictive index survey on me. And so the guy took a look at, at the survey, just looked at some of the graphs that were involved, didn't read a thing, spun it huh. back across the table and instantly told me all of the things that all of my drives, uh, what was on my annual review last year based on my position and title, what was, <laughs> what was on my, you know, kind of a, like an action plan for the following year, uh, things I'd wanted to improve on. And I sat there shocked and stunned. Uh, I had a mentor at the time uh, that was incredible. And he had given me the exact same kind of coaching that I had just received in this 20 minute read back that I got from a stranger who has never met me ever. And my mentor has been coaching me for two years. And so I I kind of uh, sat there with my jaw, you know, literally and figuratively wide open um, (laughs) going, this is crazy. I want to do that. And Ah. so when I, uh, as soon as I got employed, I did get that position, by the way. So I was the vice president of operations for a few different companies in the meantime, after that. Well, that would have been a uh, horrible story. If you hadn't got the position, I'm glad you got it. I know, right? Right. And because they found out about me, I didn't get it. Yeah, no, that would not have been well. (laughs) I've been good. Um, And so so it was interesting. So I was able to, um, the company I was going to had it, obviously. So I was able to implement it there with all new people, use it for coaching and developing people. I later went on to um, work in another company that was much, much larger than the previous one. And I implemented uh, predictive mm-hmm. index from scratch there. So we rolled that out. And uh, so I got to see kind of from an insider's perspective, you know, kind of all the do's and don'ts of how to implement it, how to use it, uh, really how to maximize this potential. And so that's kind of what got me started in it. I was, uh, you know, the old phrase of shock and awe. That was me getting across <laughs> from him. So. <laughs> Right yeah. there with ah, you. I was, I was you, Ron. I was uh, you. Exactly. I was right there with you. Um, yeah. So re- can we can we delve into how it works, or is that like not a good idea to do because it's you know maybe it will lose its magic? Uh, yes, it's all magical. Don't look, <laughs> don't, don't look behind the curtain. Um, well, to to Ron's point, it's a very very simple process. You know, I I can't really share how how it works. Um, until someone has actually taken it, because sometimes people start to manipulate it, yeah. uh, even subconsciously. And for both of you that have taken it, you fully understand how that would really easily take place. Yeah, it would yeah. really um, screw it up for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so but maybe so instead we- of that, tell us tell us the data behind it, because for the other realists out there who are going, yeah, right. right. Um, you know, you, t- two people have now suggested that this thing na- um, literally nails you. Um, right. and, and, you know, some people take up to 10 minutes, um, mm-hmm. all the people with their crazy D's, um, take, you know, a long, long time to make it happen. <laughs> I'll uh, explain that in a minute for all yeah. of you. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy D's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, it, well, it, it's interesting, you know, wh- while I was working at these other companies, I had a couple of companies call me and say, Hey, we heard you do this there. Can you help us out? And that's really kind of how we started this whole thing. And everybody then was asking me, you know, how does this work? You know, how do we use this? How do we implement it? And, you know, to answer your question, there are several things. There, there are actually a lot of things that, that Predictive Index tells us. Um, but there are really four main things that, that we teach and talk to. There's a lot more to it. It's way more complex. We actually have a, a two-day master training session um, that is, is pretty in depth that Ron has gone through most, most of it, Ron. Um, and yeah. I think you were actually even a little shocked at, you know, how much there is to, to learn about it, but oh, it's insane. But the, the gist of it is that there are four main drives. So the first one is dominance, and that is really just the, the drive to kind of have control over people and projects. Some people have a very, very strong drive for that. And those are the people that are normally the most boisterous, 
Um, you know, you hear them talk the most, you know, during meetings, they want to have their voice heard, kind of have their thumbprint, if you will, on any projects or things going on um, and so on. And so, um, and then there's a low dominance people. It doesn't mean they don't have any say or anything they want to share during the session or a meeting, um, but they're a little bit less, you know, vocal about it, if you will. Mm -hmm. So they've got some pretty good things to say often. And we look at those dynamics and we figure out, okay, who's going to be acting like what in different meetings and how can you maximize the strengths of people that think really opposite of each other? Uh, because a lot of times one group with regardless of which way you kind of lean towards will think they're right um, without mm -hmm. really opening bars of communication or avenues of communication. The second thing is, is um, extroversion. And so that is your drive to be sociable, the, the need to be around people, talk with people and so on. And with predictive index, there is no introvert or extrovert. It's just to what extent are we going to see the extroversion from this person? Because some people are quieter in public, but they're very, very outgoing and talkative in private, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with one or two friends around. And the third thing we look at is a patience level. So this is the drive for stability, you know, kind of, you know, how kind of a routine, how much you like kind of doing some sometimes repetitive work, sometimes really just understanding, you know, what your day to day is going to look like. Some people with a very low patience like myself, you know, are totally fine with change, you know, doing something different all of the time, throwing new ideas out there and moving forward very, very quickly um, with very little information to kind of, you know, say, hey, this is why we're doing it. And then the last one, of course, is formality. And that is the D that Ron <laughs> mentioned earlier um, uh, when you're looking at a, at a predictive index graph. And the formality is the drive to conform to rules and structure. So the stronger huh. that D or that drive, uh, the more you like things, you know, very structured, organized, things like that. And so um, the lower that formality is, you kind of enjoy thinking outside the box. You know, don't tell me what to do. Don't micromanage me. You know, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, for example, my uh, bookkeeper has got a very strong formality. He wants to make sure every I is dotted and every T is crossed. I believe that is an important trait of someone yeah. managing your finances, right? And so for me, I don't have that. I could do it. I could do my own bookkeeping, but I just choose not to because it's just not where I naturally fit in, where I want to, hmm. to do that kind of work. And so um, I found somebody that loves it. And so we kind of, that's how we kind of use it to understand who would be right for some roles and who, you know, can meet, maybe need to adjust a little bit for others. Like for me, I could adjust for the bookkeeping role, but why? There are other people out there that love it. Yeah, that's so interesting because when I took it, I'll just tell my experience of it. Sure. So Ron had met Mike and then Mike came to our whole team and we all took the predictive index as a team. And then we had, I had a short call with you after, and you right. kind of talked to me about my strengths, but also that I was functioning in a, in a position at the time where I was not being like my natural state and all my strengths. I was kind of flipping everything around and right. you gave me really powerful insight. You just said, Heather, this isn't really sustainable and you're going to burn out. And I remember Ron called me as well and said, what's happening? Like, why, why do you feel like you have to flip around who you are and move all the ABCs and D's all over the place? <laughs> right. And I, I could like reflect on it and articulate it. I, I could figure it out pretty quickly, actually what the problem was. And yeah. so I, we had a quick conversation and Ron just said, okay, hey, we're going to do things differently in this position for you. And it was really powerful for me as like a staff member at the time of just going, holy cow. Like I didn't really, I couldn't have probably articulated that very well. Does that make sense? Like to Absolutely. really, to really understand what the issue was, yeah. um, where I felt like I had to change myself to fit into a position versus using the natural strengths I already have. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm a hundred, a hundred percent. And you know, what we found is we we've done, obviously we've got a lot of validity studies on this. We can't promote it around the world if there's not some validity to it other than just the wow factor, right? There's mm. gotta be some validity to it. So there's over 500 validity studies on it, including Harvard did a ton of them. And mm. uh, that's why people like it is the accuracy. And, and to your point, you know, PI does three different things. Um, it, it, it describes those four drives I mentioned earlier, but it also does three different things. It gives us an idea of who you are naturally, 
Mm-hmm. And so basically those drives are really locked in with you from the time you're about 17 years old and through your lifespan. Very rarely does that change, but they can. Um, those drives can change. And those are the drives you're talking about. How do I naturally use those drives in my current role and adapt less? Everyone, first yeah. of all, everyone adapts. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, kind of be prepared for that. Everyone's going to, to adapt it at one point or another for a special project or things that are going on in their life. You're just going to. But the middle graph, that second graph, tells us how you currently feel the need to adapt. And when those two graphs are way, way different, to Mm -hmm. to your point with you, are way different, we know that you are using a lot more energy and effort to make those changes to fit into your role. And therefore, there's a a possibility of causing more stress. Um, using more energy, being more tired, maybe by one o'clock, you're kind of getting, you know, burned out, looking at the clock, waiting for five to roll around (laughs) or, um, you know, whenever you're done for your, you know, your day and everybody's a little bit different. And so the more you can stay in kind of like that natural drive zone, if you will, uh, the easier your day is. The people that find positions that allow them not to change a lot or often, those are the people that say, I can't believe it's five o'clock. This is ridiculous. I love this position. It's like, I'm not even working today. Yeah, Yeah. I can't believe they pay me to do this. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, back, I mean, to that point, um, when we did this as a team, Mike, I I remember uh, having several conversations, but there was one person in particular in the company that was, I mean, I think the quote was this, this, this girl is in hell. Like you, you, I mean, she is, and, and, and it, she has a very wide graph too. So if you can, if you can imagine in the middle is the, is kind of the norm line, mm-hmm. her graph was really wide and, and, and so much so that everything was very pronounced. Like she was very driven. She was, right. you know, all of these things were very, very, very with her and everything was the opposite and very, very, very the opposite, right? It was completely right. the opposite graph. And as we dove in, um, if you recall, what we learned is that I had hired someone to be the uh, COO of the company and she was right. running things, right? They were, they were running operations, but she was in charge. Yeah. And I, I don't think he even knew it, but he had completely squashed her and yeah. all of her dominance, everything that she would normally be was completely demolished. Right. And, and I didn't know it. Um, she knew it, but again, like Heather said, she couldn't articulate it to me Yeah, and she was just living in this hell and had been for months. And I remember you said, she's going to quit. And I said, no way. She's like, she's been with me for 11 years at this point. Yeah. And you go, yes, she's going to quit. I promise you she's going to (laughs) quit if you don't, if you don't change something. And I remember when I called her or we actually got on on a, on a zoom call with her and went over it and she was like. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm like, no way, this is crazy. Like she literally yeah. was. And I felt so bad because I mean, not only had she been on the team forever, but we were really good friends in addition to that. And I had inadvertently caused her to be in hell for like eight months. Uh, and I and I couldn't believe, I really couldn't believe it. Um, and and we we did a lot of moving. Heather, if you recall, I mean, we yeah. did a lot of movement during that time. Totally. Yeah. And I think everybody's so much happier now because they're mm-hmm. in places that that they really that they really can excel and succeed and that they like, which yeah. I mean is is amazing. One you know, word soup little <laughs> yeah. survey. That takes like five did, minutes. Uh, did all of that. Right. Um, Along with somebody who can who can help interpret all that. I mean, Mike, you're you were um, instrumental in all that because I could have looked at the thing and I would have never known to what extent she was living in hell, right? Right. That's right. And listen, all of you all, you you all met her. She's been on the show. She she started the show with me. It's Angela. She was she was literally hamstrung by the person yeah. that we had we had both hired to do this job, yeah. and. Um, and my goodness, I mean, I, I would have never done that knowingly. Um, mm-hmm. But anyway, it's it's really important to have somebody who understands all the intricacies of that. I remember distinctly when we when we first started talking, um, and you you know put me on the spot in front of everybody at the mastermind group. One of the questions that I had was because my my introversion or my my 
my extroversion is, and, and probably nobody who listens to this podcast would believe this, but I, I'm not an extroverted person. I mean, I'm kind of an yes. introverted person, right. but not on stage and not in the podcast, obviously. Right. Right. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense, Mike, because I, I, I'll go speak in front of 500 people and feel like, you know, king of the world. Right. And, and, and then you go, yeah, but once you're done, you go to your hotel room, don't you? And I said, oh yeah, I guess I do. Yeah. Uh, no social. It's crazy that you can tell <laughs> that level of detail from which side the A is on in comparison with the B and the C and the D, right? I mean, all of that right. stuff that you were talking about before in this master class, all of those things are what allows you to, I remember another one was my patience because my patience is like off the chart. Like I'm super patient. Right. <laughs> I remember saying, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. He goes, yeah, you're not when people don't, do what you ask them to do and but otherwise crazy patient yeah, yeah crazy patient so interesting and so so detailed it's so crazy so i mean one thing i've seen in our team and i wanted to kind of ask you this mike is sure. effectiveness for current teams business owners um employee retention i mean i feel like it's got to make a big impact on that when you can really dial in into someone's strengths and help them use them in their current position that's right. A hundred percent. You know, it's kind of funny, you know, to, you know, listening to Ron's story there, most leaders coach and develop their teams based on someone's title. So, you know, if I've got, you know, six salespeople or acquisitions people on my team, I almost treat them all the same because you kind of think, oh, well, all salespeople are going to think alike. Well, not all do for sure. And, and by understanding, you know, how the person thinks and how they process and what drives them, now you can coach and develop and train those same topics, for example, but differently, almost kind of custom tailored for that person, uh, even their weekly touch bases, all of those different things. And so for teams, it makes a huge difference. We're, we're currently working with a very, very large uh, a company that has a call center, very, very big call center, and they're hiring 700 people at a time. And mm. their profile that they were looking for is 100% completely opposite of who their top performers are. You know, <laughs> their recruiters were extremely high extroverted. <laughs> um, they're looking to, you know, they're looking for someone that's going to bring some excitement. It is a medical call center for one of the largest insurance groups in the world. <laughs> all they want to do is get their answer, you know, from when they call. They don't want all this oh, you know, nice conversation around there and to see how long they can keep someone on the phone. It's way, way different. And so when you understand the team dynamics and what, what each role needs and then kind of hire the person that delivers those needs naturally, it makes your life much easier. So whether you're hiring or whether you're just working on communication styles, uh, conflict resolution, most of the time I can pull up two predictive index results and I can look at both of them and I can tell you exactly where the communication breakdown is, what your conversations sound like, how you um, agree and where there might be a little bit of friction, uh, not arguments or things like that, but just how you think and process differently, which makes you think, I can't connect with this person. I don't yes. understand this person. And so when, when I can help teams understand that, and after doing this 11 years, it, it's, it's incredibly easy for us, because we've got the real world experience of actually implementing it, implementing it in a company and running the company now, um, we've kind of been there, done that. And so when Ron started doing the team dynamics, for example, um, with you all, um, it was super easy to say, oh yeah, for sure. This is what's happening. And here's what you can do about it. It's an easy <laughs> fix. <laughs> yeah. And, and, so and it was, a big difference. it was, it really the, was. The, the crazy thing is that as we discussed it with people, they were like, Oh yeah, yeah that that would be aw that that would be awesome. Yeah. You know, they were just like, yes, that would be awesome. So I don't have to do all this crap over here that I hate. Oh for my her. gosh, yes, that that would yeah. be awesome. And then the crap well, that they crap hate for you is maybe great for somebody. Right. Else. I mean, yes. it's like right. we yes. we go, hey, we're gonna have you do this over here, and they're like, oh wait, I get to do all of this fun stuff over here, and I'm like, <laughs> right. yeah, it's the crap yes. she hates, <laughs> and you get to do it because you love it, and um, and. It's remarkable because I think a lot of times business owners, we look at everything the same way and that, yeah. you know, the accounting stuff that you were talking about is just crap that everyone hates. And right. I'll hire a CPA to do it because for whatever reason, those crazy people 
love that they just they'll just do this work that everybody hates when yeah, in reality you can't, with them. you can't understand them they love it they yeah. love the the numbers and all the you know finding the problems and doing all this stuff right and <laughs> and um I, it was eye opening to me and i think the other thing too mike that was eye opening to me and I, I have been married to bobby joe for probably almost 20 years at the time when when you know when we first met and i'm like <laughs> You know, for the whole time when we plan vacations, we, we don't get into fighters over vacations, but, you know, she'll come up and she wants to talk about everything we're going to do to the, like all these details about this trip. And all I care about is that we're going to Italy. Like literally that's it. When we get there, we'll figure it out. But Ron, what are we doing Thursday at two? We have nothing in that time <laughs> slot yet. You know? And we, yeah. we both took the predictive index and then we, we both met with you and kind of walked through some of that stuff. And I was like, right. oh my gosh, this is so easy. Yeah. And now she knows that I'm not defective because I don't have to have this plan. And I know she needs all this detail. So I'm like, babe, do the, do the research and then just come tell me what we're doing. Like, I'm cool. Like we'll do I don't, I don't even care. And then I can give less input. I can listen. And, and both of us feel like, Oh good. Like I don't have to sit down and get mired in all this detailed bull crap. And she loves it. Right. She'll plan the whole thing out. And, uh, and it's an amazing trip. Right. And instead of you, instead of her thinking of you as a slacker for not wanting to do those things, she understands now that that it's not a drive that you've got, but you've got yes. other drives that are different than hers that totally make sense. And, and now you understand how to maximize those strengths instead of bash each other over the head for the yep. strengths that they're not representing that you think are important. Yeah, and I mean, if the trip really blows up, about. I'm your guy, man, because <laughs> right. I'm good on the fly. I can make this thing happen. We're still going to have fun. Exactly. Uh, but yeah. And, and that it's just, it's a, it's a really small thing. Yeah. Um, but I think all of these little small things, when you're in teams or when you're in relationships, no matter what the relationship, understanding all that we had, my kids are older than Heather's. And so we, I was actually able to have them all take it. And that was eye opening to me too, because yeah. it's allowed me to help them a little bit more with, you know, Hey, what are you going to, cause they're all in the, what am I going to be when I grow up phase? Right. And right. That's right. Um, that's been so much more fun to help because I kind of, kn yeah. I know a little bit more about what makes them tick than I did before. And I've been with them their whole lives. I should, I should know more, but this, I, I keep calling it word soup. This little word soup thing has produced something that goes, Oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. All of this yeah. makes so much sense now. That's right. Um, you know, and when, when, when you understand someone's drives, especially with, you know, uh, you know, a little bit, you know, 17 and older really is where the validity studies are for anybody that's 17 and older. So I know people that have done PIs on people that are younger. And I really ask, you know, most people to steer, steer away from that because a lot of times parents start coaching and developing based on that or those drives. And they're really not all the way formed yet. And so sometimes you can adjust things that may not need to be adjusted. Let them finish developing, finish growing. Let's stick with the validity studies. And when somebody's at 18 years old, you know, they're, they're kind of locked in by then. And so it allows yep. us to not really say, you know, what career they should be in specifically, but, you know, be, be in a career where you can express yourself this way your natural way. Does right. this job that you're interested in or career or business model that you're starting, you know, allow you to be the person who you, you are or what support do you need around you? You know, like the CPA that you were talking about, right? And so yeah. you and the CPA think entirely differently, but you're both are very, very passionate about your yeah, roles. Good thing. In the so yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I yeah. will add that one thing that has been interesting, because we haven't talked about this part, is that we reference this pretty on the regular. I mean, just yesterday or the day before. Good. So this week, um, we were Ron and I were talking about one of the staff team members, and I just said, I'm not sure how to how to manage this project with her. And he said, Well, Heather, she just needs more details. Like, if you look at her PI, that's what he yeah. said to me just this week. Like, look at her PI, you'll see that she needs more details, give her more details and instruction and she'll thrive with it. Um, that's right. but that's not something I need. Right. So I, I forget that other people, you know what I mean? So we yeah. reference it. We have a folder in Google drive and I pull it up pretty often to Good. remember and remind myself like, okay, how do I need to communicate with this person? If I feel that friction, like, what do I need to do to help communicate better, um, to help them be successful, you know? Yeah. 
I spoke to a, um, she was an executive at a hospital the other day and they were having an issue with one person really not um, kind of having a lot of conversation during their senior board meetings, uh, senior leadership team meetings, I should say. And, you know, this person has a very, very low extroversion. And so they're internal thought processors. And so everybody else in the room, there's six other people in the room, all have higher extroversion. So basically anything that comes into their mind pops out of their mouth all day long, right? Everything that they think about. Yeah. Yeah. Same with me. And so, you know, it comes out of your mouth. And so I'm, I'm constantly whiteboarding things, throwing ideas out, things like that. A very low extroverted person um, does all that whiteboarding internally in their mind. And so, you know, they, they, they did a couple of things that were different there. One, they did not share what the the meeting was going to be about. No topics were shared before the meeting started. And so that person could not internally process any topic prior to the meeting. They just wanted to brainstorm with everyone. And so everyone kept thinking, this person doesn't add value. They don't bring things to the table. They did one thing and it is so simple. They started putting the agenda out two days in advance with the topics that they were going to discuss. Super simple, right? Not, you know, some kind of mind blowing event. Right. And so, you know, as they got to the session, she was much more talkative because she was able to, um, you know, think about those things, process things. She doesn't have a slow processor, but she just doesn't whiteboard and verbally speak out everything that comes to mind. And so while I'm putting 50 ideas on the board and then eventually narrowing it down to two through conversation, she was putting 50 things in her mind and crisscrossing the things out that didn't make sense and narrowing it down to two with zero verbal communication. And And, nobody in the room could understand that. So it's very, very similar to what you were just saying. And so we were able to, we were able to identify that in about one minute, literally it was that easy um, because we already had the the predictive index data on her. And I said, this is exactly what's going on. So they fixed it by sending out an agenda, never an issue again. She comes to the table with incredible ideas um, and she's a big value to the, to the team. And she, you know, they were not really sure what to do with her, which is really sad. Um, And, you know, some people, actually do take a little more time to process things. And so when you chuck them in a meeting where you're discussing things like that and you're trying to come up with a solution in the meeting, they literally are completely fish out of the water. They they feel completely uncomfortable making a decision because they haven't had time to think about it and process it. Um, And we had somebody on our team that was that way a while back and, and I would have meetings with him where we would do this and we would get done with the meeting and I'm like, ready to roll. And he goes, okay, cool. Yeah. um, Give me a day. Let me, let me think through. And I'm, and, and for the first little bit, I was like, what? (laughs) we just thought through it for an hour. What the heck is your problem? (laughs) Right. Um, Right. But he, he didn't, he didn't actually think through. He heard, he understood, and now he needs to go process. And understanding that allowed me to go, okay, I'm going to have a meeting. We're not going to have a decision until tomorrow. And That's I just right. need to understand that we're going to have a meeting and I'm going to have a decision tomorrow. And right. he would come back and he would ask me very, very good questions yeah. that poked holes in what we discussed yesterday. And we typically made better decisions based on giving yeah. it some thought for 24 hours and allowing him to ruminate on it. Right. Because right. I'm a, I'm a ready fire aim guy. I'll aim second. Right. right. I need wire guided missiles I, because I have to change my mind. The thing has to change directions. You got to reel them back every once in a while. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I have to knock them down so they don't blow anything up. Um, yeah. But those tiny little things make so much difference in a team. And I remember there's two things that have been um, life altering for, I think, me and everybody on the team. Hmm. One of them was core values and purpose and having everybody be on the same page and and moving the same direction. And the second thing was this, it's the predictive index and understanding how everybody, just how everybody really is, and then trying to play to their strengths um, in a way that allows them to level up, become become more of, uh, more and better of who they want to become. And it's incredibly powerful where you can tweak some tiny little things that make no difference structurally to a company Mm -hmm. and make all the difference to the people, which, which is really what companies are. It's a, it's a bunch of people working together to, you know, some common end. Right. But it, man, if you can't, I, I just think that it's, it's lost on a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners that these people, everybody on your team 
they're, they're all just like you. They, they, they want to be able to, you know, feel, play and act the same way you do in your space. Like I'm in control. So if I don't want to do the accounting, I don't have to do the account. That's right. That's but right. if I, if I'm requiring this person over here to do something they hate just yeah. because, and I don't know, they hate it. I don't understand why my team is turning over every 45 to 90 days. That's right. That's such a struggle for a business owner. And largely uh-huh. it's your own fault. If you, if you could just get the data, right. Or, or, or worse, you know, their turnover does not take place and the culture is horrible because yeah. people yeah. stay and, you know, yeah. they just, just hate their job, hate their life. And then in turn, they hate their boss because their boss doesn't understand them either, but they stay. And that becomes a, you know, really bad thing permeating the rest of the group because there's just complaining and, you know, even, you know, glass door ratings are low when they leave or if they're still there, you know, all kinds of negative things can happen. Um, Ron, I know you'll be interested in this. We've recently done a lot of studies with culture, core values and predictive index, that middle graph where people are changing. And what does that mean? And I know you've always been a big advocate of those. Um, all three, but even before we met a big advocate of, you know, what's the culture like? What are the core values? Do the people line up with that? And we found some very, very interesting things. And so we, we looked first with nonprofits just to kind of give us an idea. So like the boards of nonprofits, the employees of nonprofits. And what we found is that when people really, really line up with the core values and the culture of a company, they can adapt. We talked a little bit earlier about adapting and the more you adapt, the more stress that puts on you. But when they line up with the core values and the culture that you have, people adapt more and they adapt easier knowing that they're there as part of a bigger picture for something bigger than themselves. And they yes. really have a clear understanding you know, of what the company is after. It's not just some company that's out to you know, take people's homes or, you know, you know, get people in a hospital bed or whatever the company is that we're working with, you know, at the time. And um, it's fascinating to see, you know, people are like, well, when I line up with those things, the core values, for example, you know, I'm okay with adjusting because the cause is bigger than I am. Um, yep. When there's no lining up at all and they're there just for the money, you know, uh, or they somewhat line up with the core values, then you better make sure they are a perfect, really, really good fit. Um, for that role, because that's when turnover is even higher. And so we, we can reduce turnover, we can reduce stress, we can reduce, you know, the, the management team and the kind of the, the frontline team, if you will, you know, all that friction that's there, we can eliminate all of that um, just by understanding who we've got and, and where they think in the process. It's, it's pretty quite amazing. Well, yeah. business is hard enough yeah. without you um, unknowingly making it more difficult. That's and right. so, yeah. um, this guys, this is, uh, everybody listening. This is an amazing tool. I believe every business owner, every leader, every manager of, of people should be using this. Um, and you know, Mike, if, if people want to get a hold of you, uh, how do they do that? How do they reach out to, um, to talk to you a little bit more about this? Sure. Um, we've got an 800 number, so it's a 800 406 seven nine nine six uh and you can also reach out to support at human lytics team uh, human and then lyt ics think of it like data and analytics on people uh, humanlytics.com and uh, we'll reach out to you we've got a lot of uh, professional consultants on our team um, two phds in psychology that help us to understand you know even some of the bigger broader issues that companies are having um, we've got people that literally work with six people um, i've got clients that have six people to thousands of people so if you work with mm-hmm. people and you're looking to optimize the talent of each one of those people uh, we can work with you regardless of size And uh, it's this whole thing is kind of weird. It started off as, you know, most companies have a talent strategy, but they don't have a people strategy. And we Mm -hmm. still find that today. And so that's, that's really what our main focus is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for, for all of the years I was in business, I did it, I did it all wrong. And I was, I got so frustrated with turnover because we would hire people that on paper looked perfect, interviewed perfect. Everything was perfect. And then 60 days later, they're gone. And I, and I could, I banged my head against the wall for yeah. years. I mean, Heather was there almost the whole yes. time. Yes. And I'm just like, what is wrong? Like, what is wrong? Yeah. Um, and these two things literally turned it around. 
Um, cool. And I am, I am actually very interested in, in your core values and purpose studies that you guys have been doing. That's, that's fantastic yes. because Sounds good. I really, really believe it um, that, that yeah. both of them go together for sure. That's right. So, I mean, I've heard you do a presentation on that before and it's just incredible. And so, you know, when we started looking at, you know, tying those in together, um, and we started tying them in together, you know, even prior to me seeing that, but I thought it was very interesting, you know, listening to your presentation when we were all together one time at a conference. And, and uh, so I thought, well, let's see how this lines up when we're done with all the validity studies. That, that'd be pretty cool. Well, we, we really cool. appreciate your time. Um, we're just grateful that you stopped by and, and, and blessed everybody listening. I mean, this is this guys, this is this, you, you need to check this out. This is legit and has completely altered our business. Yeah. Um, Heather approved. Yeah. And altered our, altered our joy in doing our jobs. <laughs> good, good. Hey, that's what it's all about. You know, when you love your job, you're going to be there a lot longer and you know, you just, you know, you're not as exhausted. So yes. uh, I love it. So thank you very much. I know you can pick a lot of people to be on your show and I appreciate you reaching out to me and uh, always glad to do it, Ron. It's been great catching Ooh. up with you and Heather today. And uh, if anybody has any questions, we're always happy to help. Appreciate it. Until right. next week, everybody get out there, make something happen. All right. Take care. This has been the Get Real Podcast. To subscribe and for more information, including a list of all episodes, go to getrealestatesuccess.com.